Tenakoto kato e te mana feno tenakoto ko apuki te manga ko atakaro te awa no atotahi o ko ahugo taku ngoa e akonga a i te fare wananga o wataha no rere tenakoto tenakoto kato Water consultants have been approached to investigate and undertake research on recommended infrastructure options for the development of the final stages for Redmond Spur. Redmond Spur is a developing hillside subdivision located on Kashmir Road in the Hallsville area. Stages 1 and 2 have already been completed, while stage 3 is currently under construction. This presentation identifies the recommended infrastructure in developing stages 4 and 5 explicitly regarding transportation, geotechnical and the three waters. The client profile states, portioning the development into 60% residential land, 20% commercial land and 20% recreational land, while incorporating a new cycleway and focusing on sustainability. Tinakoto katoa, e te manoa whenua tinakoto. Ko takitimu te maunga, ko ariti te awa, ko nātahu te iwi, no Aotearoa aki te puna, ko Lauren tuko ingoa, Nō rera, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. To make the client brief, the site was divided into approximately 60% residential, 20% commercial and 20% recreational. The average section size was approximately 1,500 square metres. This was chosen to create large sections that create a selling point for the owner. We decided that the main drainage channel should not be developed and was excluded from the area when dividing the site up. This is because the ch channel is relatively steep and has highly erodible soil. By leaving this area undeveloped, it can be purely used for stormwater management. As the population of Redmondsburg grows, the current roads do not have the capacity to take this increase in traffic and access stages 4 and 5. Therefore, expansions and improvements must be made to the infrastructure to accommodate this. The two main local roads in Redmond Spur are Kitchener's Knoll Road and Redmond Spur Road. Our design comprises of a T-intersection between these two roads. There are two lanes off Kitchener's Knoll Road and one lane off Redmond Spur Road, each with a cul-de-sac. In our design, as seen on the slides, the recommended roadway width is 13 metres, which includes a cycleway, parallel parking space and a 3 metre wide carriageway on both sides of the road. The roadway width is greater than 12 metres, which requires a resource consent as it is regarded as a full discretionary activity. A swale and footpath is included on one side, and a curb and footpath on the other side. An alternative to this can be a shared footpath for pedestrian and cycle access. To allow more space on the road, the on-street parking can be removed and roadway widths or cycleway widths extended. Redmond Spur is not currently serviced by any public transport routes. It is ex recommended to extend the 100 bus route to access Redmond Spur. This will create a new end of line which can be serviced by a new bus stop on Redmond Spur Road. As seen on the slides, the most direct route to Quarrymen's Trail Cycleway is indicated in red, linking Cashmere Road to the cycleway via Henderson's Road. Alternative options are shown in green and blue. Crime prevention through environmental design is a strategy that the CC has adopted after the earthquakes, ensuring clear sight lines along routes with enough lighting and no isolated areas. This will be regarded in our design. Tenakoto Katoa, Te Manawa Whenua, Tenakoto. Ko Taranaki Te Mangawa, Ko Waitakara Te Awa. Ko Taranaki Te Iwi, Ko Toko Anu Te Hapu. No tāna tamariki makauro, ko telegreen taki unua. Ia konga o te whari nā wanga, no reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. For fresh water to be supplied to the final stages of Redmond Spur, a new design was required. This was because Redmond Spur had no adequate system in place to accommodate the final stages of the subdivision. Through research and, res and investigation, the recommended solution was found that a new reservoir needed to be built above the subdivision. This would be supplied from the already existing Sullivan Sullivan's One Reservoir. This system was chosen due to its effectiveness in mitigating Christchurch's water supply issues. 
Recently, Christchurch has had the need to treat its water. However, with the reservoir chosen, it allows for this to happen, as it has a small tank for chlorination. As well as water quality, leaks in the pipeline is a major problem in New Zealand. Millions of litres and dollars are being lost in the network. However, to combat this, a pipeline material was chosen as PE100, as it allows the joints to be heat infused together to mitigate any potential leaks in the system, saving millions. The main design considerations were the drainage channels, erosion control and vegetation. The worst time for erosion is during the construction stage, when a large proportion of the soil is exposed. To minimise the sediment entering the drainage channels, silt fences should be implemented during the construction phase. The silt fences should be located on the boundaries of the main drainage channels, as can be seen on this map. Due to the complexity of the site, it was not possible to define one solution for stormwater. The main options considered were rain gardens, swales, a dry basin, attenuation tanks and a gravity reticulation network. Through further research, it was found that rain gardens and a dry basin would not be suitable for a hillside development such as Reuben Spur. Therefore, the proposed design options were swales, attenuation tanks, and a gravity reticulation network. The swales will be located on one side of the main roads and will capture and transport the stormwater from the roadways. The key purpose of a swale is to enable the removal of sediment through filtration. This should allow the water to be discharged from the site without further treatment. As the site is being developed from farmland, there will be significantly more runoff once the development is complete. To minimise the peak discharge of stormwater, it is proposed that the, each residential section has a 10,000 litre attenuation tank. These tanks will capture the majority of the stormwater runoff from the impervious areas of the section, before dis slowly discharging the stormwater down the main drainage channels or into the gravity reticulation network. The collected water can also be reused by the property owners for irrigation or washing purposes. This option allows property owners to reuse their water and reduce their environmental impacts. It is also proposed that the commercial areas have 10, 30,000 litre tanks between them. This is designed to store up to 70% of a 150 year storm. As not all the properties boundary the main drainage channel, the stormwater pipe network was set up to allow all stormwater to be discharged down the main drainage gullies. The network includes manholes and sumps appropriately spaced to ensure ponding does not occur. Tēnā koutou katoa. E te mana whenua tēnā koutou. Ko vaya te maunga, ko pasifika te moana, ngō sa mō aku tipuna, ko whanafatu sanele taku ngō, he haonga hau i te whare wananga o te waitaha, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. I will be addressing wastewater. There is currently no infrastructure in place for stages 4 and 5, so we are proposing a new infrastructure to meet the demand. We have estimated that from the 30 lots and 2 designated commercial areas, there will be a total waste of 50,000 litres produced. Traditionally, the system that was used for wastewater in Christchurch was the gravity reticulation system, but as of the earthquakes and the damage that they caused, Council decided that for better resilience, the pressure system was the better option. And not only that, it's cheaper to install and easier to maintain. And then for the new subdivisions in the Housewell area near Redmond Spur, Council has proposed to uh, install a new pressure system with a new pumping station located at, the, at 270 Sparks Road. This system should have the capacity to service 5,200 homes, which well, meets this, which well meets the needs for stages four and five and any further development above that. Our recommended design is the pressurized system as council has already introduced this system into the area and to the other subdivisions and it's easier to connect like systems than it is to connect different systems. It's much more difficult. 
Um, the sizes for our submains coming into Redmond Spur is 63 millimeter diameter and it's PV polyethylene. The si sizes for the latter will be 50 millimeters diameter PV as well as per council standards. As you can see from the layout, stages four will include seven residential lots, one and one large commercial lot. These two, these two will produce around 23,000 liters of waste. Stages five in blue has 23 lots for residential and one for commercial. These are estimated to produce 28,000 liters of waste every day. Because of the majority of waste that is produced is gray water, we recommended that a gray water treatment unit be placed at each lot to help conserve water and to help treat it so that as not that much waste is produced, therefore making it um, environmentally sustainable. Tenakotu katoa, e te mana whenua tenakotu. Ko ring toto te maunga, ko waitemeta te moana. No Aotearoa aku tupuna. No temikoto, temiki ao. Ko ima taku ingnoa. He akonga ao i te whare wanganga o waitaha. No rirea tena koutu, tena koutu, tena koutu katoa. Since Ribman's Fair is located on a site on the Port Hills, when designing for the geotechnical aspects of the project, it was important to consider slope stability and general common slope hazards that the Port Hills encounter. The final recommended design of the subdivision consisted of crib walls, crib retaining walls, located in the private lanes and by the commercial area. The reasons for using this particular type of wall was because of its permeability. It allows drainage and its absence of need to pile into the ground is a big bonus. In particular areas of the site, there is noticeably high bedrock, which would make driving piles very expensive. Using this method meant that drainage systems to relieve built up pore pressure is, would not need to be implemented, and it keeps costs low whilst maintaining a high engineering standard. In Redmond's Burr, last soil underlies the topsoil. Once the topsoil is stripped, the highly erodible last soil becomes very vulnerable and therefore erosion controls need to be put in place. Coconut recap mats were chosen for this purpose in order to restrict progressive slope instability and consequential environmental effects of the erosion. In the design, cut and fill was restricted once again due to the high bedrock. It was discovered that the soil on site could in fact be used as a fill if the moisture was conditioned and it was appropriately compacted. Doing this allowed us to limit the costs of importing fill and limit also the disruptions inside the site and outside to the public. In light of this, it was further recommended that the foundations of structures used on the site were slabs on footings socketed into the bedrock. This ensured stability as opposed to cutting and filling to obtain a flat base. The environmental effects created in the development of the subdivision were a large contributing factor in the final design decisions. Factors that were largely considered were noise, air pollution, water quality and neighbour amenity. In the process of concluding our final design, the factors were reviewed and adaptions made to our designs in order to limit the external effects as well as continually stick to our five objectives, sustainability, resilience, social health, environmental health, and fiscal cost. Our estimated cost for stages four is 3,974,000. For stages five, we estimate an, a cost of 4,087,000. This will give us a total of 8,060,000 for the whole area. Based on the current market value, we have estimated residential sections to sell between 250 to 300 per square meter. As for commercial areas, we are expecting to sell them for 500 per square meters. If this is the case, then our expected income from selling these, these lots will be $22.5 million. After expenses and expected 
the expected total profit for you will be 15 million and 78,500 and change. Thank you.